Okay, so let's go ahead and make an API. Our API is basically going to be a PHP file that echoes out JSON that you can access from anywhere. Now the reason that this is a little bit different than your normal thing is because Ajax, you can't Ajax to a remote URL. You have to use something called JSONP if you want to request JSON. And the server, which is us, it has to know what to do with JSONP. Okay, so there's basically two steps. Uh, there's, well, three steps. There's connect to the database, and again, I need to start this as a PHP file. Keep in mind as I do this that this file is actually on the server, and this file, our index page, is actually on our local machine. So, so this page is actually just on the internet. Okay, keep that in mind. So we're gonna. So the first thing is connect to the DB, to the database. The next thing is call the passed in function. Okay, and then the next thing is list our methods. Okay, let's first write a quick method um, that we're going to want to call. This is going to be function get all users. Okay, and all this is going to do is just um, going to make some user SQL, and that's going to be equal to my SQL underscore query um, select all from users, uh, select all from user, and that's it. And then we're going to make a new array called users equals array. And then we're going to say while we're just going to basically loop through um, each of the results and store them into a single array. So we're going to do users push equals user. Oops, user. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set users to uh, JSON encode encode users. Okay, there you go. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to echo out underscore get again. Um, you don't know this yet, but we're going to be passing in something called JSON callback, which is basically how we know that it's going to be JSON P. We're going to add to that a parenthesis, and then we're going to add to that our users. Okay, this will all make sense a little bit later. Just follow along. There you go. So now this is this is our JSON P part right here. This is the JSON P part. This is the JSON. This is this line's the JSON. This line's the JSON P. Okay. So that's the method that we're going to want to call. Now the tough thing is call the pass in function. So what we have to do first is test that you actually passed in the method. So we're going to say if is set um, money sign underscore get method. Okay. So first if the method's set, and we're also going to do and not empty. We don't want the method to be empty. Um, Right, method empty. Okay, so basically, if the method was passed and it's empty, then we're going to first you. Okay, so there is something in PHP where you just straight evaluate code. You could do eval and then the code, but the problem with that is you're evaluating raw PHP. You don't want to do that. So we're going to first check if the function exists and then call it. So if function exists, and we're going to look for get. No, we're not going to look for that. We're going to look for get uh, method. So first we're going to check if this is actually a valid method. Okay. If it is a valid method, then we're going to call it by doing get method and then adding this parentheses. And that will actually call the method. Okay. You should do some error checking here and return some errors in case there are none, but I don't have time, so I'm not going to. Basically, all this does is if, it's, if method is passed and it's not empty, if it is actually a function, then go ahead and get it. Okay, and then the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and add our database connect information. All right, once we do that, now we'll hop over to our index page. Now, uh, basically, our, PH, our API file is created. You know what, let's go over it one more time just to make sure you got it. We're going to connect to our database, okay? Then we're going to check if the method is set and that it's not empty. And then we're going to check our page to see if the method is actually in existence. And then we're actually going to call it. So when we pass in get all users, uh, it's going to call this function. We're going to select all the users, create an array out of them, encode them as JSON, and then echo them out with this JSON callback, which doesn't exist yet, with parentheses around the uh, JSON encoded data. Okay? So let's take a look at our index here. So we're going to make some HTML page, right? So HTML head, close the head, uh, open a body, oops, close the body. I really should just automatically type this in. Okay. Now, in here, we're going to add our jQuery. That's the first thing we're going to be doing just with jQuery because it makes life easier. Okay, jQuery. Next thing is we're going to add a script so we can write some stuff ourselves. So, script and then script. So, we're going to be using the getJSON method to call our API. So, first, we need to do it inside of a function. Like, 
function like this. Okay, when the page loads. Now we're going to use dot get JSON. The first parameter being the URL, followed by a function with some JSON data, like that. Okay, that's the syntax. So the URL is again it's online, so it's HTTP colon double slash www dot square bracket dot com slash api slash api dot php question mark method our methods going to be equal to get all users and now here's the thing that we learned and uh, json callback equals question mark this is the json p part and this is also the, the thing that we had in the get okay so now we're just going to console dialog out the data that this gives us again this is our api calling a function all right. Well, for some reason, this is is failing. So one thing I just realized though, is you don't really need that at all. The function, if function exists, is the catch-all that you need. Um, so save that. And so basically, all we change is that we just got rid of the if is set, and we're just checking if this is a function, call it. That's kind of all we're doing here. Let's go back to here. Make sure we're on the same page. Get JSON. Our URL method is get all users. JSON callback question mark function data console log refresh. And okay, there's all of our stuff. And if you want to see it used, you can see these are all in the range of objects. If I click on one, you can see that um, I've got zero, one, two, first name, ID, last name. So we've got all that stuff there. So uh, one thing I can do here is uh, I can loop through these and spit them all out. So I'm actually I'm not going to write this for you because of time, but you can do a simple for in loop in JavaScript like that for a user in data user equals data a user that's how you do it console.log user.firstname so save and we'll go ahead and refresh this and boom there we go from squarebracket.com we requested to get all users and here is all users all users first names and again you could also do user.firstname dot quote 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 dot boom and do last name because it's part of the API and boom oh, missing after a dot. Uh, oh, because this is JavaScript, not PHP. Like that, and refresh, and there we go. Lois Griffin, Glenn Quagmire. So there you go. That's how you use an API, JSONP. That's how you create an API to be used uh, across the web for anything.